Today we're going to do something just a skosh different. We're doing a retro throwback review to one of my favorite movies as a kid and ironically still as an adult. Now I know a few of you are probably thinking, why would I do this? Well, um, four words. Now I'm sure a couple of you watching must remember a small little film studio called Canon Films. They were actually responsible for quite a few movies back in the 80s, until of course that little bankrupt incident. But before that company went totally under, they actually produced a pretty big gemstone, which is actually the focus of today's review. 1987's Masters of the Universe. That's right, there actually is a live action He-Man movie out there. Just like all of us have been clamoring for years from back in the 80s when the original He-Man and the Masters of the Universe show dropped, we have been wanting a live action He-Man film. And the one we got wasn't that well received by quite a few people. But actually, I was not one of these people and I actually really adore this film and it's one of my all time favorites. So before I go diving into this video and tell you why it has such a special place in my heart and why it's more deserving than the rotten score that it has on Rotten Tomatoes, why am I even doing this? Why? 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 All right! Well, a couple of you might have heard the news that Kevin Smith is making a little known uh, show called Masters of the Universe Revelation. The teaser trailer dropped earlier this month and I have not been able to stop thinking about it. I have the power! I'm the hero. So unlike Masters of the Universe Revelations, which is coming out on Netflix later on this month, Masters of the Universe back in 1987 was not what we call a faithful adaptation to that beloved children's show we all remember growing up with. At least those of us who grew up in the 80s. So let's get right into this movie with some of the main stars because while this wasn't a full-on faithful adaptation, you still had to have a couple recognizable characters. He-Man was played by the absolutely stellar Dolph Lundgren. I really feel back in the 80s, no one could have encompassed the champion of Skull like Dolph. We also had Tila and her father, Man at Arms, as well as, of course, the Sorceress of Skull. Now that we got the good, we still got to get with the bad, and that's where we got a awesome performance by the actor Frank Langella, who played a marvelous Skeletor, pure gold in my opinion. Couple that with his right-hand lady, who was of course Evelyn, and unfortunately the only other carryover from the show that we got was a somewhat lackluster performance with the character of Beastman. So let's get into the premise of what exactly is all happening in this film. And if you consider this a spoiler warning, seriously, it's been 30 years. So in Master of the Universe, the unthinkable has happened. Skeletor has won with his army of mechanized drones and a cosmic key that can open a doorway to anywhere. Skeletor has succeeded in taking Castle Grayskull, kidnapping the sources and is primed to acquire and possess the power of Castle Grayskull. It's up to He-Man and his rebel friends to defeat Skeletor and his minions to recapture Grayskull and its power for the side of good. I know, sounds pretty killer, right? So why did people hate this film? Because of a couple of stupid reasons. It wasn't a faithful adaptation from the cartoon show. No sh but just like Zack Snyder's version of The Man of Steel, they just went a different way with Masters of the Universe and they made it a little bit darker. They took a little bit of liberties with the visual aesthetic, but honestly, I really love what they did with this film. We're dealing with budgets and in the 80s, the word was practical effects, not CGI. 
and also the lack of introduction to some of our classic favorites. Like we didn't get Balcat, we didn't get the Magician Orko, those two characters alone would have been a very heavy special effects budget. And also think of some of the other masters that didn't make their way into this film, like Stratos, Ram Man, Zodiac, and without the help of the CGI like we have today, it just wasn't gonna happen, at least not in a believable way. We also did get a couple of newcomers to the story. Like for instance, most of this movie actually takes place on the planet Earth, not Eternia. Budget. And there we got introduced to two characters who were an aid to the story with Kevin as well as Julie. Some of the other supporting characters that we actually get into this movie with is the inventor Gwildor who actually created not one but two cosmic keys. We have some of Skeletor's evil minions, we have Blade, Zerod, as well as Karg as the special forces. So let's get into what I really loved about this film instead of spoiling the entire premise for you. First off, He-Man's look. Dolph Lundgren did a amazing job as He-Man, in my opinion. He looked the part, had the muscles, and that power sword, while not show accurate, was still pretty badass. Frank Langella played an absolutely amazing Skeletor. I dare anything! I am Skeletor! That throne room, the Castle Grayskull throne room, was just breathtaking in its immenseness and awe. And also the tone. I mean, if any director out there could actually make an awesome live-action He-Man movie that was a direct copy of the cartoon, Hey, feel free to prove me wrong. I just don't think it was possible. Look what Zack Snyder did with Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and also his version of the Justice League movie. It was a darker tone. It was not something that we expected, and yet it's got a surprisingly loyal fan base to which I am definitely a part of. Master of the Universe took that same kiddish vibe of hope and happiness and twisted it into a more realistic edgy adaptation of a darker tone. Skeletor had one. I don't think he got away with that in the TV show for anything more than maybe one episode? My final thoughts on this movie, was it an A-plus film? Absolutely not. I know there's plenty of plot holes and things that people could nitpick to death, and trust me, they have. I still get mad at anyone who calls this film a B-movie. Is there things I would have done different? Yes, absolutely. I would have showcased Eternia a bit more. Probably would have introduced the whole Prince Adam aspect. Maybe bring She-Ra in there. I don't really know. There's so many ways you can go with Masters of the Universe because it has such a rich history. But I can tell you that that movie definitely deserves more than this rotten score that's gotten on Rotten Tomatoes. But hey, don't take my word for it. Guys, let me know what do you think of Masters of the Universe? It's pretty easy to find. I'm pretty sure I saw it on a streaming service. It was on Tubi not too long ago, unfortunately not anymore. But rent it, give it a watch. A couple of bucks is more than enough to just give this movie a second chance. And who knows, maybe with enough people getting on board to this old film, the classic cartoon, and of course the new Masters of the Universe Revelations that is premiered on Netflix later this month. Who knows, maybe we can be closer to another live action interpretation of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Thanks for joining Vision All Access and keep that conversation going. Here are my handles, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I am on those constantly. And I'll definitely try to pump up some more videos because we are just around the corner from tech season, which is of course my creme du jour. Thanks for joining me here on Vision All Access. Hope you give a try out to the film. And if you did, let me know down in the comments and tune into the next Vision All Access where we cover some awesome tech.